Welcome to part three of XLRA formula trick number 14. Hey, we've been busy doing a bunch of calculations and we ended up with this standard deviation of the portfolio. I'm oh, that was the huge formula we created. We want to see an easier way to do it this time, but it's going to require that you know a little matrix algebra. If you don't know how to use the MML, go back to XLRA formula trick number 12 where I showed you how to use the MML function. Now, as it turns out, this formula, if there was a way, the, the problem with this formula is we had to actually list this value with these relative cell references a bunch of times. It's listed there, there, and a few other places. And the whole trick to this shorter formula is getting these values listed vertically in rows. If we know a little matrix algebra, it's not hard at all. And actually, I did it this way, this big long formula, and then I posted this to the MrExcel.com discussion board, and a guy named Dominique uh, showed me how to use this MMAlt function and a couple other cool tricks to make this formula much shorter. I'm going to click Escape, and I want to try and create these values. I'm going to highlight this range, 1, 2, 3, 4, and type equals MMAlt. And I'm going to uh, multiply two arrays. Now, the first array, because the whole goal is to get these listed vertically, is going to be the weights times, and I need all of these individual values. Now, right now, uh, this is just an array of values. And I claim that the array of values in memory is going to be about that big. And let me show you how to prove that to yourself. This is a cool trick right in the middle of a formula. You can highlight this, and you can hit F9, which evaluates. And instantly, you can see that's the array that's stored in memory. There's a comma, a comma, a semicolon. So there's three co columns, and then a semicolon, 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 semicolon. So there's four rows, three columns. I'm going to control Z. Actually, let's do that again, F9, because I'll show you one other thing. Our goal is to add this, this, and this. If we were to, using matrix algebra, multiply this matrix times a vertical array, a single column of ones, it would, in essence, add. It would add this, this, and this. Watch this. Because in matrix algebra, you have to have in the first array uh, one, two, three columns. And in the second array, you have to have three rows. If that's true, first matrix, three columns, second matrix, three rows, and you can multiply. Well, what if we had an array of ones listed vertically? Well, one times this plus one times this plus one times this gives us exactly what we want, which is that number summed. I'm going to control Z. And let's see how this works. Times, and we're going to have to build our matrix, uh, curly bracket, 1, semicolon, 1, semicolon, 1, end curly bracket, close parentheses. That's a matrix listed in memory. 1, 1, 1, and semicolons means row. So that will work. Watch this. Control, Shift, Enter. It's not times right there. It's comma. I can't even read my screen tips. By the way, the way these screen tips always work is they're polite. They say, hey, there's a comma there. If you want to get to the next array, you got to put a comma. So I'm going to put a comma. Oh, there it is. Now it shows me in bold, so I know it is good. Control, Shift, Enter. Oh, that is so cool. That is amazing. Now I'm going to point this and drag this over here, right there, and say, move here. Now, what we really want is to have um, return minus the expected return, and then squared, and then have the probability. Now, I'm going to hit F2 here. And we can simply um, subtract from this our uh, return, uh, expected return for the portfolio. So I'm going to say minus SUM, open parentheses, and I can highlight the ranges now. We know we've done this a couple times already. That range times this range times this range. It's all the returns times the weights times the probability. Close parentheses. Now watch this. Control Shift Enter, and we get our numbers bloop, here that we have right here. Oh, this is pretty clever. Now watch this. This is even more clever. Click in this cell right here and hit F2 and then F9. 
you see how in memory there's one, two, three, four values listed separated by semicolons? That's what we want. That's just in this single cell. We entered it vertically and it put the individual cells. But when we do our final formula right down here all together, that whole formula will create these four values in memory. I'm going to click Escape. Uh, and I'm going to highlight this whole range right here and hit F2. Now, so far, we've just gotten these values. But what if we squared them and then multiply them by the probability? So let's try that. I'm going to put parentheses around what we have so far, and then caret 2. That'll give us all the, in fact, we can control shift enter and prove it to ourselves. Oh, there they are right there. Then I'm going to hit F2, and I need to put parentheses around that, and multiply it by a whole range. Oh, yeah, the probabilities, right there. Control, Shift, Enter. No way, look, that's what we got right there, all in one formula. We didn't have to go boom, boom, boom. But finally, we want it all in one cell. So watch this. I'm going to hit F2 and then copy everything except for the equal sign, Control, C, Escape, and then I'm going to click here. and. Remember, if we added up all these values, that would be variance, and then took the square root. So here we can simply equals square root, S-U-M, control V, and then close parentheses, close parentheses, control shift enter. you got to be kidding me. Just with one formula, let's hit F2 and admire that. That's amazing. Control shift enter. Well, we're going to get even more amazing. And this is the another trick uh, I learned from uh, Dominique, not just this MM alt, but watch this. What if, see here, this is typed in, this is hard coded into your formula. You don't want to do that when you can avoid it. What, for example, if we had an extra stock and we right click insert and we needed to add it another. Um, uh, weight right here and another stock. Well, sure enough, that formula right here would not update. F2, that 111 would not update. So here, watch this. We're going to do a trick that will actually look at the number of columns. It, we can use the column function, which will count 1, 2, 3, but it will be listed in columns. If we then use the transpose function, by the way, we've looked at both transpose and the column functions in earlier uh, array tricks. But if we had uh, column and then transpose that, that would give us a linked vertical array of ones that would be linked to the number of columns. So let's scroll down here. And I'm going to highlight this range right here and replace it. I'm going to say transpose. Transpose what? Column. And now I'm going to highlight these columns very carefully. Boop. So now we have transpose with the orange one and column with the little pink one. I'm going to have to put a close parenthesis on that. Now we have it, but guess what? That won't work because this column part would return um, whatever columns they are, uh, three, four, five. But watch this. What's three raised to the zero power? One. What's four raised to the zero power? One. What's five raised to the zero power? One. So now on the column part right here, and by the way, we can use our little trick right here, F9 to see what it is. Oh, yeah, look, commas are columns. So it's three, four, five. I'm going to click Control Z. Isn't that a cool trick? I love it when you're trying to do a really hard formula. Now let's um, caret 0 and see what we get here. F9. Oh, 1, 1, 1. But whoa, that's not right. We need them listed because matrix algebra requires that the second array be listed uh, in rows. We need three rows with numbers. So watch this. this trans I'm going to control Z. Then I'm going to highlight the whole transpose all the way to the orange and hit F9. <gasps> Look at that. One, semicolon, one, semicolon, one. Control Z. And we need one more on our mamult right here because we're missing that green one right there. So we click. I love those colors, that green one, and then Control Shift Enter. Wow, is that not amazing?